as the turf war between the bloodline, the Judgment Day, and Seth freaking Rollins continues to intensify on the road to SummerSlam. We approach an eight-man tag team matchup a week from Saturday, but live tonight in Evansville, Indiana, the street champ, Solo Sokoa, back in action for the first time since All-Star Raw in May. SummerSlam momentum is on the line. Solo, one-on-one -on -one with the visionary. Seth freaking Rollins, who has certainly had Roman Reigns' blood on his hands in recent weeks. Solo, Rollins, live tonight on Monday Night Raw. We are inside the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. Less than two weeks before the biggest party of the summer, Summer Slam. Where this man is set for a Detroit street fight against the megastar, LA Knight. A war has been waged between those two gentlemen throughout the summer, and it all comes to a head on Saturday night, August the 17th in Ford Field. But tonight, it's an eight-man tag team matchup. Who's gonna get the edge over the other? The following contest is an eight-man tag match. Introducing first, from Worcester, Massachusetts, Weighing in at 270 pounds, Dijak! Well, Dijak and LA Knight have been at each other's throats, not just in recent weeks, but all throughout the summer. But we want to take you back to last week in the All-State Arena in Chicago. LA Knight set for a one-on-one -on -one bout against the phenomenal AJ Styles. Die Jack sneaking up on LA Knight as he was approaching ringside. A little pre match ambush that certainly gave AJ Styles the advantage from bell to bell. LA Knight not going to back down from the challenge. Did his best to shake off the cobwebs of that ambush, but in the end, it was AJ Styles popping up LA Knight for a Styles clash and securing victory seven nights ago. Hence the reason that the OC. Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, and AJ Styles in tow stand alongside Dijak tonight. LA Knight opposes them. We still wait on who LA Knight will be standing with in his way tonight. This is not the only time AJ Styles will see action this week. It's coming your way this Saturday, August the 10th, the WWE Live event for No Nation Gaming channel members only. More information on this event coming later tonight here on Raw. Be sure to hit the join button or hit the link up in the cards. Become a channel member and don't miss out on what will be a pivotal pit stop on the road to SummerSlam WWE Live this Saturday night. The OC alongside Dijak. Set to draw the battle lines in the sand as we kick off Monday Night Raw with a monstrous eight-man tag. But who is going to stand alongside the megastar, L.A. Knight? Well, Dijak could not live with his own failure since getting drafted to Monday Night Raw and ambushed back to LA Knight in the month of June has caused this issue for months on end here on the red brand. LA Knight screwed out of victory back at Money in the Bank last month in London as Dijak exposed three out of the four corners of the ring. Using the steel to his advantage and knocking out LA Knight in the 0-2. Well, LA Knight has not forgotten. Cost Dijak a matchup against Brunson Reed several weeks back. Dijak dishing the favor to the megastar last week. The road to SummerSlam certainly is heating up. LA Knight in need of some tag team partners. And it looks like he's got one hell of a duo on his side. And it combined with a four. Hundred pounds to Muscle Chapa 
Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, DIY, no strangers to the OC. A couple of clashes several months ago during AJ Styles' pursuit of Sami Zayn and the Intercontinental Championship. Reigniting that flame here tonight as Gargano and Ciampa stand alongside the megastar. That makes three. We still need a fourth for a bell to sound here at Evansville, Indiana. Certainly an impressive team thus far on one side of the ring. Well, looks like the defiant LA Knight has got himself a big tag team partner. From Black Forest, South Australia, weighing in at 330 pounds. Business pick it up with Big Brunson Reed. Well, Brunson Reed and Dijak, as we just mentioned a few moments ago, stood toe to toe several weeks back on Raw. Brunson Reed getting a little bit of an assist thanks to LA Knight on that evening. Reed looking to be returning the favor to the megastar, being his final tag team partner in this opening eight man tag. Well, Brunson Reed has been sending. I don't even want to say tidal waves. He's been sending tsunamis throughout the Monday Night Raw locker room. Stood toe to toe with CM Punk in Punk's hometown last week in Chicago. Gave the WWE Champion a run for his money. Brunson Reed back in action tonight as we kick off Monday Night Raw from the Ford Sever in Evansville. LA Knight and Dijak kicking things off, giving us a little preview of what is to come a week from Saturday at SummerSlam. Of course, the biggest party of the summer it will be a Detroit street fight. No count outs, no disqualifications, nothing stopping these two superstars from tearing each other to shreds. Look at Luke Gallows and AJ Styles trying to get them some of LA Knight as his back was turned in enemy territory. LA Knight better keep his eyes on Dijak and not pay attention to the OC or it's gonna come back to bite him just like it did there. This is massive SummerSlam momentum hanging in the balance of the two superstars who are locked inside the ring right now. And look at the talent that awaits at ringside. Gallows, Anderson, and the phenomenal AJ Styles who has certainly been making some waves throughout the summer as he reclimbs the ranks on Monday Night Raw. All standing along Die Jack tonight, LA Knight certainly assembling an impressive team over the last week since this matchup was announced. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, no strangers to Gallows and Anderson. They have clashed a couple of times back in the spring and early part of the summer. Big Brunson Reed, I'm sure, would love to be a difference maker. And LA Knight in need of a tag at the current moment as Dijak and the big LG, Luke Gallows, muscle him down to size. LA Knight going to continue to fight, going to continue to scratch and claw. Not looking to see another loss. And another heartbreaking one at that, just like we saw back at Money in the Bank in London. And look at Gallows taking advantage of DIY. Now just trying to squeeze the life out of Defiant Loudmouth, the megastar, L.A. Knight, who had not drive it in to the Ford Center here in Evansville, looking for a loss. L.A. Knight creating a little distance, look at the strength to get the big LG on his shoulders. Down goes Gallows! LA Knight, LA Knight fired up! Big time elbow drop to the heart! Dijak not even gonna allow anywhere close to a three count. As to be expected, there's the tag to Big Brunson Reed, who's got to be itching to get back in competition after a tough loss to CM Punk last week in Chicago. CM Punk extending the hand and giving his respect to Big Brunson Reed after their third fight throughout the summer last week. Brunson Reed certainly proving that he can hang with the best of them. Any given day, Reed is going to continue to be a problem here on Monday Night Raw just as he is a problem for Luke Gallows at the current moment. Tag made a machine gun Carl Anderson, who hopes to be a difference. Not a big Brunson Reed's got anything to say about it. Look at the power out of the big Aussie. 
Down goes Anderson, eating the canvas for Monday Night Dinner. On a sidestep. Hudson Reed, super agile superstar. His own momentum getting him set over the top rope and Dijak taking the rug out from underneath his feet. Ronson Reed is fighting in enemy territory, surrounded by Dijak, Anderson, Gallows. Meanwhile, the mastermind, AJ Styles, just watching as all these men try to assault Ronson Reed at ringside. Reed sending Anderson back inside the ring. I think that's exactly where he needs to focus this fight. It's not going to be fighting in enemy territory. Tag made to DIY's Tommaso Ciampa. As we mentioned, DIY and the OC having a couple of battles a couple of months ago here on Monday Night Raw. The OC victorious in six-man tag team action back in the month of May. DIY getting the victory in 2v2 action against Anderson and Gallows a few weeks later. Tommaso champion Johnny Gargano. Last time we saw them in action was over on Velocity. Picking up a victory over Ashante the Adonis and Cedric Alexander. I'm sure the OC as well as DIY would love to pick up a win tonight. Maybe move one step closer to contending for the World Tag Team Championship in the near future. That is all speculation. Tommaso Ciampa just trying to focus in on Carl Anderson right now. He's been all over the machine gun. Tag made to the whole shebang. Johnny Wrestling and these former set of tag team champions working like a well-oiled machine. Organo and Ciampa. I've seen some bumps in the road since reuniting a couple of months ago here on Raw. Looking sharp at the current moment. Tag made of the phenomenal AJ Styles. Gargano ducks out of the way. Styles thought he was going to come in hot. Johnny wrestling with something to prove. AJ Styles, as we mentioned, been on a little bit of a redemption tour. Trying to climb the ranks of Monday Night Raw all over again throughout the summer thus far. He has seen success in recent months. Not trying to fall short to DIY and company here in this eight-man tag team matchup. Big-time victory for AJ Styles over LA Knight in singles action last week, regardless of how we got there. Oh, no. Dijak tagged in. Gargano walking into the line of fire. Sit out, choke slam. And he almost had him. But Johnny Gargano, with a heart of gold, going to continue to fight. I don't know if that was a wise move by Gargano. Usually it is rolling to the outside, trying to create some R&R. &R, rolled in the enemy territory. Either way, you spin it. Dijak making sure there is nowhere to run from the in-ring competition. Dijak looking to put an exclamation point on this matchup. Gargano, sunset flip, trying to steal the victory for his team. Dijak into a reversal here. Back and forth we go. The action red hot here on Raw. And speaking of tonight, Still to come, the A-list superstar, The Miz. He's got a score to settle with the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. The history between those two men evolving throughout the summer. We're going to take a closer look as they clash later tonight here in Evansville. Johnny Gargano taking down Dijak momentarily. And a tag made to Big Brunson Reed one more time. But Dijak levels the big man with a big boot. These two men went to war a couple of weeks ago. Power bomb by the Aussie. AJ Styles in. I am sure Dijak itching to almost get his hands on Brunson Reed and get his win back. Thanks to that distraction by LA Knight several weeks back here on Raw. Back and forth. The tall and agile Dijak against the big and destructive Brunson Reed. Waging war in the middle of this multiple man matchup. Reed now. Dishing it right back to Dijak off the shoulder block. Now Dijak could be looking to suffer the same fate as Carl Anderson did earlier on. Face first he goes. Tag made to the big LG. Luke Gallows and Reed once again going to meet in the middle of this matchup. Reed knocks him down momentarily. There's anybody who's got the strength and the wherewithal to continue to level Luke Gallows time and time again. Look no further than Big Brunson Reed. Scale on the ropes, but Gallows looking to cut him in half. Oh, man! Dijak in. The action nonstop in this eight-man tag team matchup live here on Monday Night Raw. 
We are less than two weeks away from the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. Dijak will go one-on-one -on -one with LA Knight in a Detroit street fight, a story that has evolved throughout the summer. Right now, Brunson Reed, Luke Gallows, your Leo competitors in the midst of this eight-man tag. Gallows looking worse for wear as Brunson Reed could be looking to send shockwaves throughout this entire arena. Luke Gallows got to try to shake off the cobwebs before Brunson Reed has his way with the big man. Oh, my goodness. Get a load. Look at that. Buckle bomb the Gallows. And Reed is just not letting up as Brunson Reed now going somewhere he's extremely comfortable. Tsunami on Luke Gallows. Oh, and you gotta believe that would have been it had Machine Gun Carl Anderson not broken up the pinfall. Tag made to LA Knight. Brunson Reed throwing some salt in the wound of Luke Gallows. LA Knight now. Looking to divide and conquer. Takes Dijak off the apron. Down goes Anderson. Down goes Styles. Gallows trying to sneak up from behind. The Megastar off the reversal. Picks the legs. LA Knight into the pinfall. And he got him. The Megastar got him. LA Knight assembling a team of Avengers tonight. And this superhero unit leveling Dijak in the OC before our very eyes on Monday Night Raw. A hell of a way to kick things off. Momentum just may be on the side of the Megastar. Here are your winners. The team of LA Knight, Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, and Bronson. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. Well, as we approach the biggest party of the summer, we approach the return match from Money in the Bank as CM Punk is set to defend the WWE Championship against the man he defeated back in London, Kevin Owens. Here tonight on Raw, we are gonna take a closer look at both of these individuals' respective 2024 journeys thus far. Because win, lose, or draw, these two men have had themselves some banner years. Let us talk about CM Punk, the self-proclaimed best in the world, returning to the WWE for the first time in 10 years back on January the 7th at the Royal Rumble, immediately making an impact on Raw, defeating the likes of The Miz, Carmelo Hayes, and what about the victory over Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania? That was a notable night for Punk. He may have been the victor, but he was also injured in the process. Punk stood on the sidelines for just over two months, all the while Kevin Owens was riding a high at the top of WWE as its champion. Back at Vengeance in May, Owens had retained his title against Shinsuke Nakamura, only to have his celebration a bit rained on by a returning CM Punk. Punk had made his intentions crystal clear. He was gunning for the WWE Championship. This journey from May to July was full of twists and turns as CM Punk advanced all the way to the finals of the King of the Ring tournament, only to come up short against SmackDown's Cody Rhodes. Punk was forced to find another route to challenging for the gold. And as the Judgment Day had made not only CM Punk, but also Kevin Owens' enemies, Punk saw an opportunity to get under the skin of the WWE Champion. Hopping off the apron in the midst of a tag team bout and leaving Owens to fight alone. 
Punk had stated time and time again. He has no personal quarrel with Owens. He has only had intentions of doing what he felt he needed to do to get a shot at the WWE title. We discussed in detail last week the difference in opinions between these two men, but ultimately it comes down to what happens between the ropes. And what happened back at Money in the Bank was CM Punk was the better man on that night, becoming the WWE Champion for the first time in 11 years after a physically demanding battle with Kevin Owens. But if there's one thing we know about the prize fighter, he is always ready for another round. Owens wasted no time invoking his rematch clause, which leads us to Saturday night, August 17th, in Ford Field, Detroit, Michigan. Will Owens recapture the coveted WWE title, or will CM Punk once again prove to be the best in the world? But that is, of course, if CM Punk makes it to SummerSlam as the WWE Champion. Because coming up this Saturday night, it's WWE Live for channel members only. And we can confirm that an eight-man over-the-top rope battle royal will kick off the event. The winner moving in to the main event to challenge CM Punk for the WWE Championship. Also coming up this Saturday, the new WWE Tag Team Champions from Friday Night SmackDown, Angel Garza and Humberto, defend the gold against the other half of the Latino World Order, Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde. And for the first time since the month of May, Jay and Jimmy the Usos are back in action as a tandem. They take on Brutus and Julius the Creed Brothers. Hit the join button, hit the link up in the cards, become a channel member, and don't miss out on this exclusive house show this Saturday night. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle coming your way exclusively each and every Wednesday only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code, follow on TikTok, and don't miss a second of Velocity. We want to take you back to this past Saturday night in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Monday Night Rawls, Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. 2v2 against SmackDown's Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark to try to crown the new Women's Tag Team Champions. Both tandems impressing between the bells, but in the end it was SmackDown's Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, and that pit bull Zoe Stark capturing the gold, hoisting them high in the air, leaving new Women's Tag Team Champions. And we can confirm that coming up in 48 hours over on Velocity on TikTok, the unholy union of Alba Fire and Isla Dawn take on Katana Chance and Kaden Carter, the winners of this matchup, to be crowned the first number one contenders for SmackDown's Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, who will challenge for the women's tag team titles. We will find out on Velocity on TikTok this Wednesday afternoon, but we are back inside the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. Piper Niven has got to be in one hell of a bad mood after her running buddies and Chelsea Green and Sunday Deville came up short at Saturday night's main event. Piper Niven has left her own path of destruction as of late on the red brand. <laughs> But will that momentum continue tonight? And certainly huge news for the EST that broke earlier this afternoon. Coming up a week from Saturday at SummerSlam, Bianca Belair gets another go around with the Nightmare Rhea Ripley, the WWE Women's Championship, will be on the line. Bianca has been chasing the gold throughout the summer. Rhea Ripley taking away title opportunities earlier on back in the spring. One of those being a heartbreaking loss to Bianca in her hometown of Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, Belair has done the homework, has scratched and clawed to become the number one contender. And she is looking to pass the test, defeat Rhea Ripley, become the champion all over again. She gets her opportunity a week from Saturday at SummerSlam. 
which certainly makes this matchup tonight all the more interesting for Bianca Belair. She has got to keep the momentum sky high for Piper Niven. A victory over the number one contender could mean championship implications in her future. And you look at Piper Niven and her go arounds inside the squared circle as of late here on Raw. Came up short to Becky Lynch last month in London. Unfortunately, celebrations was not to be. Piper Niven laying out the man moments after that contest. The following week, Piper Niven picking up a huge singles victory over Bailey here on Monday Night Raw. And then, of course, accompanied Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville to their victory against Katana Chance and Caden Carter last week. And things would have not gone the way of Piper, Chelsea, and Sonya. Hold that thought. Look at the strength out of the number one contender. Bianca Belair is just a different breed. They don't call her the strongest, the fastest, the toughest, the roughest for nothing, and very well could be your next women's champion here on Raw. Well, as we are about to mention, Piper and Ibn, Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green not getting the happy ending they wanted at Saturday night's main event. The tag team championships not coming to their locker room. But Piper and Ibn looking to change their luck here tonight in Evansville. Not if Bianca Belair's got anything to say about it. Bianca Belair picking up a hard-fought victory over Tiffany Stratton recently on Raw, and then just last week getting in the face of Rhea Ripley, throwing down the gauntlet, reminding the Nightmare what her intentions were, becoming women's champion all over again. So much riding on that matchup that we all break down over the next few weeks. As Piper and Bianca continue to go back and forth, just jockeying for position here on Raw, Piper Niven is not looking to come up short once more. Oh, wait a minute. The man, Becky Lynch, is in the Ford Center. Remember what we said moments ago, Piper Niven laying out Becky back in London, England last month. Bianca Belair looking to take the fullest advantage of the distraction. Oh, but Piper Niven getting the shoulder off. Becky Lynch trying to come out here and get a measure of retribution. Almost came back to Pipe. Piper Niven. But Piper better turn things around because it certainly handed the momentum to the EST. After these two women were going back and forth on the shoulders. K.O.D. Delivered with the utmost emphatic force. Bianca Belair once again proving to be a worthy number one contender. Here is your winner, Bianca. Oh, hold on just a second. The nightmare is in the house. Bianca Belair stood eye to eye with Rhea Ripley last week after her victory over Miss Money in the Bank, Cora Jade. It looks like Rhea is returning the intimidation factor. Well, Rhea Ripley tried to use Bianca Belair as a stepping stone back in the month of May. Rhea Ripley screwed Bianca out of winning the championship at her hometown in Knoxville, Tennessee. Bianca has scratched and clawed to become number one contender. Can she take down Rhea one week from Saturday? Last year, 16 of WWE's best cruiserweights clashed in an eight-week tournament to decide who stood above the rest at 205 pounds and under. This year, we do it all over again. Sunday afternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern time, kicking off on September the 29th, 16 men representing SmackDown, NXT, and TNA Wrestling will participate in the 2024 edition of the Cruiserweight Classic. With the field more wide open than ever before, who will scratch and claw their way to greatness and be crowned the winner of the historic Cruiserweight Classic?
As we found out this past Saturday, the Cruiserweight Classic returns this coming fall. Eight-week tournament, Sundays at 12 noon Eastern, kicking off on the 29th of September. Featuring superstars from NXT, SmackDown, and TNA Wrestling, the Cruiserweight Classic is going to be off the charts. We want to take you back to last week on Monday Night Raw. Something that was not off the charts for Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin was this sneak attack. The return of Akam and Razor, the authors of pain, former NXT Tag Team Champions. These two men set free by the harbinger of doom, carrying cross, and of course the mastermind, Paul Ellering. What kind of hell has Karrion Cross unleashed on Monday Night Raw? His issues with Breaker and Corbin have led to this. And next week, the authors of Pain, Akam and Razor, return to action live on Monday Night Raw. Certainly a destructive path that Karrion Cross is carving out here on the red brand. But switching gears, it is time for in-ring action as one king of strong style, Shinsuke Nakamura, looks to continue to use The Miz to once again make a name for himself all over again. Well, after some shortcomings in the month of May, Nakamura returned to the ring in a matchup against The Miz back in June. Victory wasn't enough, however. Ambushing the A-list superstar after the bell, simply looking to send a message to the Monday Night Raw locker room that Nakamura was more dangerous than ever before. Just a few weeks later, Nakamura in the ring with R-Truth, and once again, victory was just not enough and ambush after the matchup. Unfortunately, R-Truth suffering a beatdown. Luckily, The Miz coming to the aid and taking the fight to Nakamura. Well, Miz and Shinsuke were set to settle their battles last month in London. However, Nakamura passing off some, let's be honest, BS injury and sticking Omos on the A-list superstar. And unfortunately for R-Truth, taking the fight to the Nigerian giant Omos this past Saturday night in Minneapolis, suffered the same destructive fate. Our truth and the Miz have been brought together in recent weeks thanks to common enemies. Omos has raked up some victories thanks to Nakamura's antics, but now Shinsuke Nakamura, one on one at the Miz, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, made your bed, you might have to sleep in it. Nakamura had all the intentions of the world. After getting knocked out of the King of the Ring tournament and failing to win the WWE Championship back in May, to remind the WWE Universe in the Monday Night Raw locker room just how dangerous he can be. Put up or shut up time. Will Nakamura make his statement or will The Miz make him regret his actions? Well, you know, The Miz has not been shy about talking about his shortcomings over the last few years in the WWE. It has been quite some time since a bona fide future Hall of Famer and let's be real, a decorated superstar has seen success. This is a man who is a multiple time Intercontinental Champion, former WWE Champion, former WrestleMania main eventer. And the last time The Miz had seen massive success, well, you're gonna have to rewind the clock a few years. You know, The Miz may not want to deal with this issue with Shinsuke Nakamura on these terms, but if you want to turn it into any positive, Nakamura targeting The Miz last month, or I should say two months ago here on Raw, and causing this whole stir may have given The Miz a newfound focus, a newfound aggression. Let's see if he can channel that energy here tonight. A little bit of a grudge match here between Nakamura and Miz on Monday Night Raw. Miz, I am sure, Desperate for victory against the King of Strong Style, but Shinsuke Nakamura did not carve this path for any reason. If he wants to get back to the promised land, if he wants to get back to contending for championships, if he wants to be one of the most feared superstars walking planet Earth, one of the most feared superstars that other wrestlers do not want to get between the ropes in. 
Well, then he's got to pick up some W's, and he's got to do it in convincing fashion. As for the Miz, dare I say a much-needed victory tonight to try to stay relevant here on Monday Night Raw. Nice sunset flip on Shinsuke Nakamura. We've never discounted the talents of the A-list superstar, but the result is where it matters, and the Miz has not seen great results for the better part of two years. Oof! Nakamura showcasing why he can be dangerous in the flip of a switch. Big time Saido knocking down Miz momentarily. Miz was wise to roll out of the ring and not allow Nakamura to capitalize on his down body. Saw the Miz standing by side R-Truth this past Saturday night. Again, we talked about it then. We talked about it moments ago. Miz and Truth, former tag team partners, really brought together thanks to recent enemies. Most importantly, Shinsuke Nakamura. Miz standing by R-Truth in his battle with Omos this past Saturday night. Obviously, as you saw, did not go the way of Truth. Omos getting his hand raised 48 hours ago in Minneapolis. And have the Miz out here tonight, and he has taken the fight to Shinsuke Nakamura wherever the fight needs to go. On the outside, delivering those world-famous it kicks. And Nakamura set of those diamond-plated steps. The Miz here for a fight against Nakamura on Monday Night Raw. Nakamura just looking worse for wear at ringside, trying to hustle up and get back inside the ring with The Miz on his A game here tonight in Evansville. Nakamura got under the skin of The Miz with that post-match beatdown last month. Miz making the save to R-Truth, making sure he didn't suffer the same fate. Miz wanted to settle this back in London. Nakamura brushed him off. Miz has been waiting for this battle, but Nakamura looking to turn the tables. Back and forth, these two superstars start to go here on Monday Night Raw as Nakamura now taking control. Wait a minute, our truth here at ringside. Oh, might be trying to take Nakamura's eye off the ball. All is fair and love and war. Nakamura's been making some enemies, and it looks like Truth and Miz are doing something about it. Our truth come out the ringside, giving the momentum on a silver platter to the A-list superstar the Miz, and he's locking in a little figure four leg lock. And dead center of the ring, great positioning by the A-list superstar. Nakamura cannot reach out, cannot grab the ropes, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Nakamura, we said it before, we'll say it again, made his bed, and Miz and Truth are making him sleep in it tonight. Nakamura able to escape that maneuver. Oh no, Miz might have got caught. We might be headed right back to a back and forth pendulum swing. Death Valley driver and the Miz pops the shoulder off. Our truth trying to play a difference maker and he did momentarily. Now just like that, Nakamura proving to be as dangerous as he says. Within an instance has taken control back. This is what Nakamura wanted. Wanted to be destructive, wanted to be dangerous. Well, it's matches like this, it's nights like tonight where you prove it. Well, Nakamura better stop showcasing to the WWE Universe, better focus in. Miz off the reversal, look at the Miz moving. Now, oh, big time knee, that's an A-list knee if I ever saw it. Nakamura showboating, got caught in the act. And the Miz just stole the victory right out from underneath his nose. Here is your winner, the Miz! Nakamura may have underestimated the Miz and did not count in the factor of our truth. What a victory for the A-list superstar here on Raw. If you're feeling lost, sing this song with me. It will shine a light. A hope that you can see. Sing away, carry me. Sing
Earlier tonight, we took an in-depth look at CM Punk's comeback year here in the WWE. 2024 has certainly been generous to the Second City Saint, but the same can be said about the man that opposes him at SummerSlam, the prize fighter, Kevin Owens. It was around this time last year that Owens felt he had hit a low point, failing to capture the WWE Championship on numerous occasions. Owens felt he was at rock bottom of Monday Night Raw, and he needed to scratch and claw to get back to the top. Well, after months of hard work, Owens went on to win the Royal Rumble match in January, staking his claim in the main event of WrestleMania. Owens took on a game Seth freaking Rollins, but in the end, Owens was able to overcome the obstacles and secure the prize WWE title on that night in Dallas. Owens went on to successfully defend his gold against the likes of Sheamus, Brunson Reed, Finn Balor, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Lashley, nearly saw an end, but once again rose to the occasion in a rematch with Rollins back at King of the Ring. Owens has spent the better part of 2024 on top of the world, but it all came crashing down at Money in the Bank as we discussed earlier tonight. CM Punk played his cards correct. He forced Owens to fight an emotional battle and put to sleep the reign of Owens last month in London. For Kevin Owens, SummerSlam is personal. He discussed last week on WWE.com his long fought journey to the top of this industry. And for CM Punk to take that away, Owens feels he has something to prove come Detroit, Michigan. CM Punk is looking to ride through Ford Field, still the WWE Champion, but Kevin Owens is prepared for war. It's round two, and it's for all the marbles. Owens, Punk, the WWE title, one week from Saturday at SummerSlam. And what about one of the other matches signed for August 17th? The Great One, The Rock, from guest host to in-ring action, the Viper Randy Orton struck. Last month at SmackDown and the Great American Bash, The Rock responded this past Friday night. It's Rock, it's Orton, for the first time ever. Also from Friday Night SmackDown, the Women's World Championship will be on the line. The prodigy Roxanne Perez did not come to SmackDown to make friends. She wants the gold. Raquel Rodriguez given her the opportunity she so desires a week from Saturday. We saw a preview of these two gentlemen in the wage, the war that will be waged, we shall say, earlier tonight. But it all comes to a head in a Detroit street fight at SummerSlam. Will Dijak go two for two at premium live events, or will the megastar get his retribution? A bad blood situation there, and the same can be said about this grudge match from Friday Night SmackDown. The Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre has pinpointed his failures on the Mad Dragon Ilya Dragunov. Will the Czar get his payback for the actions of Money in the Bank, or will Drew McIntyre stand tall? Over the last two weeks, we have seen these two women come face to face, and it all comes down to what happens between the bells when the Nightmare Rhea Ripley defends the WWE Women's Championship against the red-hot number one contender, the EST, Bianca Belair. And what about this highly anticipated clash as the 2024 King of the Ring winner, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, takes on the Ring General Gunther for the World Heavyweight title. Will history repeat itself from last year at SummerSlam, or will Gunther's iron fist of a destructive reign continue? The turf war from Monday Night Raw bleeds into Detroit. The bloodline stands in arms. Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, Jay and Jimmy the Usos take on Seth freaking Rollins and the united front of the Judgment Day. Solo and Rollins gonna meet coming up next on Raw, but what about next week here on the Red Brand? On the final Raw, before SummerSlam, Damian Priest and the Judgment Day costing Sami Zayn the Intercontinental Championship several weeks ago. Kevin Owens prepares for his clash with CM Punk in an attempt to get retribution for his best friend one-on-one -on -one next week with Priest. And we take a look at some of the history, specifically between Jey Uso and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Dom playing a pivotal factor in the Usos losing the World Tag Team titles back at Vengeance in May. 
Jey Uso has been out for a pound of flesh ever since. And remember, these two men were supposed to go one on one in the King of the Ring tournament months ago, but that did not happen. Thanks to injuries sustained from Jey Uso, thanks to the actions by Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Dominic Mysterio, of course, winning the Intercontinental Championship over Sami Zayn last month in London. But the past coming back to haunt the young superstar. Next week on Raw, days before the eight-man tag team match in Detroit, Michigan, Dirty Dom puts the Intercontinental Championship on the line as he goes one-on-one -on -one with Jay Uso. A matchup that was originally signed for the first round of the King of the Ring tournament months ago. Now they clash on the final roll before SummerSlam. The gold's on the line live next week. But it is main event time for the Ford Center in Evansville. Solo Sokoa returning to action tonight for the first time since All-Star Raw three months ago. And remember what happened on that night. Solo the replacement for Jay coming up short against Dominic in the King of the Ring. And then Damian Priest with that South of Heaven right through the announce table. Just one of the many actions that the Judgment Day bestowed upon the bloodline. Which all leads us to the Turf War. The eight-man tag team matchup coming up at SummerSlam one week from Saturday. But here tonight, in your main event on Raw, momentum may be the word of the evening, and it certainly couldn't mean any more than it does in this main event. Neither one of these superstars looking to go back to their respective locker rooms with their head hanging low. Rollins, solo, waging war in your main event. And how did Seth Rollins get involved on the battlefield? We take a look back to the night Roman Reigns was set to make his return to Raw and address all the issues between his family and the Judgment Day. However, Roman Reigns never getting to hold the microphone in his hand thanks to the actions of the visionary, Seth freaking Rollins. A curb stomp and certainly the night where Rollins solidified himself a pivotal part of this bloodline Judgment Day warfare. Rollins and the Judgment Day have always seemingly had some kind of loose partnership, friendship, if you will. When the numbers seem to be favoring the bloodline, the Judgment Day called upon somebody who Roman Reigns knows very well. Rollins certainly with no problem trying to take out Roman Reigns. And we will discuss that in due time as we are underway in your main event. Solo back in action as Seth Rollins. I'm going to bring this thing to the axe salad in the early moments. I'm sure Rollins and the Judgment Day sat together and put together the right game plan to try to take down Solo, maybe incapacitate one member of the bloodline before we get to SummerSlam a week from Saturday. What about the news we found out moments ago? Damian Priest going to be in action next week on Raw. He defeated Sami Zayn a few weeks back. It was a pivotal part in Sami losing the Intercontinental Championship to Dirty Dom. Damian Priest goes one-on-one -on -one with the WWE Champion's number one contender, Kevin Owens. Also, Dirty Dominic Mysterio, first defense of the Intercontinental titles. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Jey Uso next week here on Monday Night Raw. Seth Rollins and Solo Sokoa clashing before our very eyes in the main event. Rollins all over the enforcer of the bloodline in the early moments. Seth Rollins out to divide and conquer with Solo Sokoa in his eyes tonight. Over the top rope and down goes Solo at ringside. You know, we talked about moments ago how Solo Sokoa, I should say, as Seth Rollins had no problem getting involved in these issues between the bloodline and the Judgment Day. 
The Judgment Day called upon Rollins to try to even the numbers when Roman Reigns was returned to address the problems. Rollins knows Roman Reigns extremely well. Tons of history between those two men dating back to their days in the Shield. And you know, Rollins has been very vocal on social media talking about Roman Reigns and why he is involved in this whole situation. Rollins feels a bit disrespected. Rollins feels over the last two years, he has been one of the standard bearers, the flag bearers, if you will, that have held the WWE on his back while Roman Reigns was off in Hollywood. Seth Rollins feels Roman Reigns walked back in the WWE and immediately was demanding the respect, calling himself the tribal chief once again. Rollins felt disrespected, the Judgment Day felt disrespected, and look what it has all led to. Never say I agree with Judgment Day or Seth Rollins, but they have certainly done their homework on the men that they oppose at SummerSlam. It took weeks, months for Solo, for the Usos, to Roman Reigns to finally rally together for the bloodline to stand in arms. The return a couple of weeks ago was certainly a shocker to us all here on... What the hell? Wait a minute! Dirty Dominic Mysterio, Jay Uso, back in the parking garage. What the hell? Dominic Mysterio just smashed Jay Uso's hand right in the trunk of that car. Back where Jay Uso was originally put on the shelf by Dom all those months ago, lightning strikes twice. Dominic Mysterio trying to take out Jey Uso before they finally clash one-on-one -on -one next week for the Intercontinental Championship. I do not like that. I don't know where the rest of the Judgment Day and the Bloodline are lurking, but we better get some cameras around this arena to make sure there's no destruction at hands of the black and purple brand. Right now, Solo Sokoa just trying to focus in on the only thing he can control, and that's the visionary Seth freaking Rollins. Rollins controlling the first few moments of this matchup. Solo turning the tables. You gotta wonder if there's any rust in Solo Sokoa's repertoire tonight. First time he's competing inside the ring, as we mentioned, since All-Star Raw back in May. The injury sustained by the Judgment Day. Now Solo coming off the top, looking for that Samoan headbutt. Delivery was not to be found. The visionary out of the way. Falcon Arrow by Rollins. And a super kick for good measures. Seth Rollins looking to stack the offense and as we've mentioned before, incapacitate the street champ here tonight. In a matter of moments, crash and burn from Solo. They don't call it high risk, high reward for nothing. Oh wait, now what? Wait a minute, Finn Balor, one half of the World Tag Team Champions, and Jimmy Uso backstage as well. This is not good. The Judgment Day has picked apart the bloodline, it seems. Jimmy Uso said right in the equipment box moments after going in to the concrete brick wall. This is not good. Solo is out here in the ring. Jay laid out in the parking garage. Jimmy laid out on that steel grate by Finn Balor. I do not like this. We are less than two weeks before SummerSlam, less than two weeks before the Bloodline has a chance to finally right the wrongs of all these months when they go 4v4 against Priest, Balor, Dom, and Rollins. But it seems as if the Bloodline may be falling short here tonight on Raw. Solo Sokoa, not to sound like a broken record, but just needs to focus on what he can control inside of the ring. Seth Rollins, using the ropes, up against the ropes, trying to get to his feet. Solo rocked. Seth Rollins, a visionary for a reason, held the WWE Championship for the better part of a year. Rollins now, springboard, take it out Solo. The Visionary not looking to head back to the Judgment Day Clubhouse where I am sure they have put together many a blueprints trying to take out the Bloodline. Not looking to head back there tonight with a loss in the lost column. Rollins not rushing up, allowing Solo to come to him. And that is the veteran instincts of the Visionary just setting the street champ and his lifeless body to the outside. 
You know, at one point in time, they called Seth Rollins the architect. And I am sure the Judgment Day have leaned on the mind games of Rollins throughout this whole situation. Ever since Rollins got involved when Roman Reigns returned a few months ago. Oh no, Solo Sokoa now going for a ride. Buckle bomb into the corner. Rollins are going to put this thing away here on Raw. Not just yet, Solo still alive. The street champ not looking to fall short. No matter what has happened to Jay and Jimmy in the backstage area, Solo looking to come out on top against Seth freaking Rollins tonight. And what a massive victory it would be. Rollins thought he had this matchup put away off the buckle bomb. Solo Sokoa surviving and starting to thrive in this main event live on Raw. And Rollins taking out the knee. Just when you think Solo has turned the tables, the visionary, Seth freaking Rollins, still alive. Oof. Man, I don't like this. You gotta wonder where Solo's mind's at as well. Dealing with all these issues with Rollins and the Judgment Day. You know, I'm sure Solo Zuko would love to get his hands on Dominic Mysterio, on Damian Priest, the men who injured him back at All-Star Raw. Well, Rollins off the crossbody. Not enough to put Solo away that time. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Damian Priest with Roman Reigns backstage. Again. The Judgment Day are wreaking havoc all over this arena tonight. Meanwhile, Solo Sokoa trying to come alive before our very eyes. Seth Rollins caught the crossfire. Down he goes. Solo is getting fired up. Jay laid out by Dom. Jimmy laid out by Balor. Priest beating down the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. But no matter the divide and conquer mentality of the Judgment Day that is taking place throughout the Ford Center tonight, Solo Sokoa may have enough to come out on top in between the ropes. Seth Rollins thought he had this matchup put away on a couple of occasions, but Solo Sokoa continuing to rise like a phoenix. Another reversal there by Rollins. Misses wildly with the super kick. Solo Sokoa gonna keep it simple, keep it effective, try to squeeze the life out of Seth freaking Rollins with the bear hug. Ain't nothing you could do in this kind of situation except what Rollins is doing and moving his body all around, trying to flare out of the stranglehold. Solo trying to take the breath out of the lungs. Rollins clapping the ears. Solo meets him in the middle. The Enforcer, Solo Sokoa, will not be denied here tonight. Back to the top. This did not work out the first time for Solo, but maybe it'll work out on the second. Goes for the Axe Hammer. Rollins with a shot to the rib cage. And a super kick once again. And Oh, no, again, Damian Priest with Roman Reigns in his grasp. Oh, now Roman set off the legend through the table. My God. The Judgment Day are looking to incapacitate the bloodline before we even get to SummerSlam in less than two weeks. We are back inside the Ford Center here in Evansville, Indiana. We are in the midst of a colossal main event. Momentum on the line, high stakes, high reward, high emotion as Solo Sokoa tries to battle back against Seth freaking Rollins. The Judgment Day have taken out the bloodline all throughout the arena. But the result may be a little bit different between the ropes. Not just yet, Rollins is still in it. Solo Sokoa not letting that shoulder up shake his confidence. The street champ earned his nickname for a reason. And he has seen, we have seen time and time again just how dangerous Solo can be. Seth Rollins in trouble. Samoan spike time. Not just yet. Counter by Rollins. Kick to the gut. The visionary into the ropes. Curb stop to Solo. And within a snap of the fingers, life taken out of the lungs of this entire audience. Another kick, Rollins realizing 
that tonight is about making a statement. A second curb stomp. Solo Sokoa knocked out cold by the visionary. Not a good night to be a member of the bloodline. Solo Sokoa falling short in the ring. The bloodline dismembered. The bloodline dismembered throughout the arena. Divide and conquer. The mentality of Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor, and Seth freaking Rollins. The road to SummerSlam continues to heat up. Rollins on top here tonight on Raw.